Welcome to What's That Pen, helping you find your next perfect pen. My name is Amanda Arneal, and today we are diving into the Pilot Enso watercolor brush pens. This pack has seven different colored fine line watercolor brush pens and then one bold line black brush pen. So it's sort of a mix in one pack. The pack that I have has eight pens in total and it's about $18 online, which makes it just over $2 a pen. Let's dive in and see exactly what we can create with these pens. Now these watercolor pens are meant to be blended, which means that we will be testing them on student grade watercolor paper and artist grade watercolor paper after we go through our pen checklist. They're watercolor, but I'm not sure if they're acid free. I can't seem to find that anywhere. So we leave that as a big question mark in the sky. Let's open these guys up and see what we've got. So first of all, inside the package, one thing that I noticed, what a cute little addition. You can't see it from the outside. I don't even think that they tell you it's in there other than they say it's a hand lettering kit. If I can get this out without making the most awkward faces in the world. Inside, there is a little insert that shows you some brush lettering. And then I can see in the very inside, it tells you to visit their website for additional helpful videos, creative ideas and inspiration, which is always nice to have. So that's a nice little add-in that they have on the box. I didn't even know it was there, like a little surprise. But let's dive into these pens and see exactly what we think of them. So that tip is extra fine. I mean, that's what they promised us. That's what we're getting here. It looks like a nylon tip, but it's definitely supposed to be a brush tip. It is just so extra fine, it's taking a while to color that in. Now, sometimes you wanna be able to do watercolor pieces and keep them really tiny. So pens that are extra fine are really hard to come by. This is a good way to come by something super teeny tiny. But one thing that I notice is that the difference between upstrokes and downstrokes isn't huge, but that's over these big rolling hills here. If you were to do it on a smaller hill, then you do notice a little bit more difference with that upstroke and downstroke. It's actually quite a nice difference. Makes, it makes sense for the size. You don't want there to be too much contrast between the thicks and thins, but you still want there to be enough for it to make a difference. Now, because this is a thin line, I'm going to draw it just to the side of the dotted so we can make sure that we can see it. So that's the size of our thick line and our thin line. It's about half the size of the thick line. Okay, for nib rebound, let's take a look at that. So pushing just on one side, and I've had these pens sitting for a while, so that's my fault. That nib is still very, very curved. You can see exactly which side I was pushing on. And if you're not turning your pen enough, having nib rebound that doesn't really rebound like this, that can mean that over time your letters will start to get messy because those upstrokes will get fatter because the pen isn't going back to its pointed shape properly. So with one like this, you just need to be really aware that you need to constantly be turning your pen to push it back to that rebounded or original pointy state. So it's, it's not awesome. That's what my daughter likes to say to me rather than saying that it's bad. She says, it's not awesome. Actually kind of feels nice. It's a good way to say it. And very few pens write extra small, but this is definitely one of them. Let's look at juiciness now. So coloring this in and then we'll smear it. There definitely is smear, and we expect that with watercolor markers. I wouldn't say that they're super wet, and a lot of that is just because the nib is so thin, they're not intended to color in a big area, but that nib being thin will allow us to get the smaller size writing. For our ease of transition, let's take a look at how easy it is to go from an upstroke to a downstroke. We had a bit of a blip in the radar there and an upstroke to a downstroke and then back up. And so there is a little bit of imprecision with the transition. That could be my fault. I'm going to try that one more time. It's embarrassing. Upstroke to a downstroke and back up. Yeah, I'm going to say that that was user error. So 
The transitions are relatively smooth. There's not a big size that you're coming from to a small size. So I would say that the transitions are okay. They're not the easiest that I've ever seen because obviously it is possible to make mistakes, but it's also not the worst. So let's look at how it works on our student grade paper first. We're gonna put some color down and then blend it out. So just a little swatch of color get our paintbrush wet, activate the color, and then pull down. So one thing that I notice here is that you can tell where that color was first placed. It doesn't actually activate and blend super smoothly. I wonder what it would do if I touched in on the water. So if you're touching your pen to where there's already water, then it seems to blend out a little bit better. So what you might want to do with pens like this is rather than putting it directly onto the paper, this would be better for painting onto an already wet area. So if you've already painted some water in there, then you can go in with your marker and touch on the already painted areas and hopefully you'll be able to stop that hard line from happening as you blend it out. All right, let's try blending this pink one. So we'll put the pink down, get some water. And I did do that relatively quickly. I tried to do it as fast as possible actually. And then we will just blend this down to see if we can get a nice seamless blend. And if you do look in tight here, you can still see the pen strokes, even though I did activate it and have tried to blend it out. Those pen strokes just seem to stick around a little bit more than we would probably like. Let's try adding a bit to the edge where there's already some water and then blending that out. Sometimes you just have to figure out, okay, well, this is a bit of a weakness with this pen. How can I still use it so that it's not a waste? But just pay attention to the fact that you're going to already have to have water on your paper in order for these not to show those lines, at least on student grade paper. So let's look at artist grade paper to see how that blend goes. We'll try red first. Add some color to the page. Activate the color by putting some water on it and then start to pull it down. And I'm still seeing that line, so I'm gonna try to buff it out a little bit, but it looks like it is just stuck into the page there. I was so excited to find a fine point watercolor brush pen. Well, the green is blending nicely. I would say that for this pen, it definitely does make a difference if you are using the artist grade paper versus the student grade paper. There is less of a distinct line, even though there is still a bit of a line here. The green blended really nicely. Let's try the blue on this one to see if the paper makes a difference using that same color. So there's our blue swatch. Activate it and blend it down. And we're still seeing those lines up in there. Let's let it dry so we can directly compare the two while we move on to doing a letter. Now, one thing that's gonna be really hard about lettering with these is that your letter is so small that I'm not really sure how to get in there with a paintbrush. I don't think I even have a paintbrush that small. That being said, I will say that drawing that letter was very easy. Look at this, I'm just ruining that beautiful letter. Drawing the letter was super easy because these pens really have a very crisp point. So on those upstrokes, you can get hairline thin upstrokes, which is really lovely, but it just means that it's a little bit hard to get in there with a paintbrush afterwards to do some blending. 
So I've managed to add a little bit of water and then bringing the orange in by tapping onto some of those water areas, you can go in and add that second color, but you can't really go in and lift color off just because it's so, so small. And again, those hairline letters are really, really nice being able to do those hairline upstrokes. I'm going to try to thicken these downstrokes up just a little bit. See if I can go in there with my microscope. Try to lighten it up a little. Let's try just leaving a gap in the center and then having these colors meet up. So there we have the colors meeting up in the middle one thing that's limiting me is the fact that I don't have my glasses on, so I can't really see the line all that well. And the fact that my brush is actually bigger than the line of the pen. Okay, let's look back at this blue really quickly. And there's quite a difference in the way that it's able to do a gradient on the artist paper versus the student paper. And I would say that the artist paper actually shows off the ability of these pens really nicely. One thing I love about these pens is that hairline upstroke. So you can get some beautiful words and letters because you can get the finest upstroke ever and you can still feel your pen tracking across the page, which is so important for getting a crisp upstroke and one that you can really control. If you can't feel the pen on the page, your upstroke is going to vary in its size, whereas this one, it feels like you're scratching it across the page like you would maybe with a real ink nib. So if you need super fine lines, in color, I would say that these pens are a really fabulous choice. It also comes with this thicker pen, let's see, whoa, which has a lot of flex to it. The pen is actually turning rather than keeping its orientation, which makes that one a little hard to use. But these ones make for really good colored, ultra, ultra fine lines. So if that's what you're looking for, then this is a great option for you. I wouldn't say necessarily that these would be the first ones I'd pull out for doing watercolor, but I would pull these out for doing ultra fine line pieces, especially on watercolor paper because they are intended to be used with watercolor paper to make those watercolor effects. And even using them without watercolor, you can still get a really beautiful crisp result, which shouldn't hopefully, hopefully break the nib of the pen because if that's what they're designed to do, hopefully, over a long time, that's what they'll do. So I would say that for pros and cons, these have the pro of having a nib that you can feel when you are doing those ultra hairline lines. That's really nice, especially if you're doing a composition that's large. Maybe you're writing out someone's wedding vows. You need something that is ultra fine because there are a lot of words to fit in there. So this is a great option for something like that. Some of the cons though are that there aren't all that many colors to choose from. This bold black pen probably is one you're never going to use because it flops around. The ease of transition for them is okay when you're doing something like this, but I found in letters it was actually really easy to control, especially on watercolor paper where you can feel that catch on the page. And they have a nib that looks like it will last pretty well, even on that watercolor paper. However, cons to these are that they're still over $2 per pen, and the fact that you're also spending $2 on this pen that you're not gonna use, not necessarily great. The nib rebound was not great, so you need to remember to be turning your pen often, which is something you should be in the habit of doing anyways if you're doing brush lettering, so keep that in mind. And another con is that they're not gonna work really well on student grade paper. You're definitely gonna need to use their watercolor qualities on artist grade paper. And because the line is so skinny, it's going to be hard to use them for watercolor purposes in a real substantial way. So you sort of have to think about these as just a regular pen with an ultra fine tip. 
That also means that because they are watercolor pens, they are gonna smudge if they get wet, so keep that in mind. But it can also be something that, of course, your artistic creativity, you can manage to work to your benefit. So I would say that these are pens that I'll pull out if I have to write something long, especially on watercolor paper. But for watercolor pens, they probably wouldn't be my first choice. Just keeping it real, right? So these ones perhaps weren't my first choice. They wouldn't be the ones that I would say to you, you definitely need to get these pens in your collection. But there are quite a few that I have said that about and then others that are stinkers. So make sure that before you buy your next pen set, you check out the What's That Pen series and watch the review of it. I go into lots of details, sometimes too much, but I wanna make sure that you are making the absolute best decision for your pen purchasing.